Hi, this is Darren from ALO Upholstery and Interiors. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to upholster this ottoman. The top lid is 21 and a quarter inch by 21 and a quarter inch by 5 eighths thick. This is only one piece. And for the sides, I cut it 14 inch height by 20 and a half inch width, four pieces of it. Now I'm just gonna put glue on the sides and put a few staples just to hold it in place so it's a lot easier when you do screw it down. So once I'm done stapling all the sides, I'll be screwing it down with two inch screws. And for the top lid, I'll be putting glue and screwing it down as well. So the top lid fits evenly with the bottom base. So pretty much on all the sides, you want to screw it down. So I cut it two extra pieces of wood to put on the bottom for extra support for the legs. So now that I've finished putting glue on it, I'm just going to screw it in place. So you want to do the same thing on the other side as well. Now I'm just going to mark how many buttons I want for this tufted ottoman. Now I'm just measuring trying to find all the center parts. So when you're working with a thinner foam like 2 inch that I'm going to use, you want to make sure the buttons isn't too wide or else it won't be puffy. The wider it is, it'll look more flat. So from the top lid, I put two and a quarter inch. So the measurement is seven and a half inch side to side and top to bottom. And the other measurement on the top lid is seven inches to the edge and two and a quarter inch going downwards. So I'll be using a 3 8 drill bit to drill the holes. So I like to use a 2 inch firm foam like this. It gives it a nice crown puff to it. If it's too soft, it's hard to get that nice puffy look to it. And the type of glue that I'm using is at the top left corner. So for the sides, I'll be using two inch firm foam as well. And this is the spray bottle that I'm using. So once I'm done gluing all the sides, I like to glue the top last. It makes it a lot easier. Now I'm using a 12 inch needle like this and a marker so I could poke it through the wooden hole that I drilled earlier so I could see where the foam is and drill it out from there, which is a lot faster than marking it on the foam again. In my opinion, marking it on the plywood first hand is more accurate than marking it on the foam. So now I'm using a one and a half inch hole saw to drill out the foam. So you want to drill all the way to the wood. So I like to shave off a little off the edge like this so you don't see a mark when you do pull the fabric on it. 
So now I'm wrapping the fiber all around the foam area so it's a lot easier to work with when you do put the fabric on. So I like to always thin out the edge like this so you don't see the edge when you do start putting the fabric on. So here's how the pattern looks like. We did four pieces of this for the corner and then four pieces again for the middle area and then one piece for the top. So right now we're going to sew all the sides first attaching it and then we'll sew the top afterwards. So this is how one of the sides look like when it's done. So once the sides are all done, we'll be sewing the top part. So I'll be using crystals like this with the two pound nylon strings. So the best way is to put two strings into the needle once and then push it down instead of doing one string at a time. This is the type of staples that I'll be using. And to lock it down, I like to make it look like this letter Z. When you're fixing the pleat, it's easy to put your fingers underneath the vinyl and play with it from there. Also with this Rexel table, you're able to work a lot easier and more efficient. You can bring it up and down easier. So you want to make sure you're always stretching the vinyl outwards. So now I'm using a knife to cut through the foam. This is where the extra fabric will hide or else you're going to have trouble hiding it. So when I am working on it, I like to fold the pleats last. It makes it a lot easier than playing with it first. So now that I've done stapling that part, you can see me folding the pleat. It makes it a lot easier. See how it is, how I pull it down. It pretty much comes into place. So you want to pretty much do all the sides like this first hand and then do the corners after. I think this would be a lot easier. Now I'm using plastic lights like this. So here's how the finished product looks like.
So thank you for watching and if you liked the video please give us a big thumbs up and don't forget to share it with others. Thank you, bye.